Oh, once again, you see, I am working on a... <laughs> oh, once you see, I am, again, working... What did I just say? Oh, once again, you see, I am working on yet another piece of older technology. This one is... Oh, what is this thing? This is a Sanyo boombox with a dual cassette deck. Yeah, more old stuff. This particular item <laughs> has never worked properly since the day I bought it in 1998. In fact, the date is right there when I bought this thing. Because I was, I actually still kind of am obsessed with putting the date on everything I buy so that I know exactly how long I've had it. So yeah, that's how long I had this thing. I bought it for 12 bucks off a garage sale way back in Elmendorf Housing in Anchorage. And the radio has never worked properly. There's something up with this switch over here. And as you can see, before I got it, this was done. And I have no idea what in the world happened to those traces to, to make a need for all these extra wires. But if you look at this, you'll see that trace is totally bombed <laughs> right here. It's just a total mess. And that one right there has a little piece of solder sticking up off of it. Well, I think that one was added by me, but I'm not certain of that. Now, I used to be able to get the radio working by just touching a screwdriver to these two traces, and suddenly it would just work. I have no idea why that was the case, but touching these two traces that my camera is being a retard and not focusing on caused the radio to work. I never understood this. I still don't because I, uh, I did the same thing last night and it, it freaking worked. I just don't get it. But I've got the thing taken apart right now, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and this is the switching question. It's a four position. The lower three always worked before the top. So you got AM on the bottom, you got a short wave one and a short wave two. Now I don't really know why, but that's just the way this thing is. FM, SW2, SW1, and MW. I don't know why they call it MW. It's AM radio. But you get it, you got all of these. Top three are megahertz, bottom is kilohertz. So there you go, there's the range. And FM, SW12, and MW. Now, FM worked whenever it really felt like it. The bottom three always seem to work properly. Well, I seem to have figured out a fix, a, an actual permanent fix for this. Uh, let me plug it in. Okay, currently we are on um, uh, shortwave one, I think. And shortwave two. And it's noisy. I, surprisingly, there's actually some stations down here. I was not able to get an identifier off the station, but I was able to tune one in. I just don't understand why they put radio on this far down when hardly anyone's got a radio that runs these frequencies. I don't know, it's weird. But anyway, so you got AM broadcast. Oops, and now I just fucked it all up again. Show me. Now it's not gonna work again. Strangely, if I bend the board, it works. Bend the board, bend the switch, you know. Oh, now it's just not gonna work. Great, great. This is retarded. Are you looking ha! Now FM's gonna work right. Now that's just funny. I don't understand this thing. Drives me crazy. Okay, there's shortwave. That came back. But anyway, I think I may have figured out how to get A or FM to work for good. Check this out.
Okay, that trace I was talking about a minute ago, the one that's got the solder drop on it, that total mess of solder on that fourth pin right there. Follow the trace, it goes up, it follows this line and goes up to this little pile of solder and everything here. And you just came on out of nowhere. Okay. <laughs> Let me do my freaking video, you machine. I don't understand you. Okay, I had a wire here I was using yesterday. There it is. So, I figured maybe there's something wrong with that trace. So, I just stuck a little wire between that trace and this up here. And that consistently works. So, I'm going to go ahead and solder in a wire right there and just bypass this little mess of a trace right here. But I don't understand why it still like freaks out every now and then when I bend the board. I don't understand that. But it's always been this way, as far as I'm aware, as far as the time I've owned this particular thing. Uh, all right, well, I'm just gonna solder that on there real quick and we're gonna go from there. that the most fantastically heat-ish freaking solder job you've ever seen but it goes up there to where it needs to go so we're gonna test it out and see if it works <laughs> or not <laughs> and it does awesome freaking a so I got a radio again that's awesome and it seems to be unaffected by the moving of the board <laughs> awesome! Of course, now I have no AM band or short waves, but I don't listen to AM and I don't listen to short waves, so whatever. FM works, so that's all I care about. And you know what? I bet, I bet, okay, quiet. I bet if I run a bead of solder from Focus. I bet if I run a bead of solder from these three pins, which are all connected by that trace, up to right there, I bet the short wave and AM will also work flawlessly. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Just because. Why not? Make this thing work right, you know? Now, like I said, function over look, and I really don't see anyone else digging into this thing to make sure it works properly, but it should. Let's find out. Oh, well, that sounds like great queen right there. There we go. Now it sounds better. But now we're going to look in the shortwave and AM and find out that my fix didn't work. Oh well, who cares? It's probably got something to do with these because they run off of the bottom traces too. Basically the way this switch here works is um, okay, the top is the input uh, focus! God, I'm going to get the SX20 out on this SOB. At least it functions. Okay, well, it works the same throughout all of these. You see there's five pins per side and four positions. Well, okay, the top two pins are the inputs. So these two are inputs. The next down is FM. Next down is SW2. The next is SW1, and that's AM. So, somewhere in here... Something is screwy, and I'm betting it's right over there in that cluster fark. Because it's a cluster fark, you know. 
And, you know, I'm really not all that interested in fixing, fixing that. I got FM to work. I'm happy. I got Bohemian Rhapsody over here. Yeah. The fun part's going to be putting this whole darn thing back together because of this little mess right here. But we'll get her. We'll get her. And maybe I'll do something about this whole AMSW whatever. And maybe I won't. Because like I said, I don't do AM very much and I don't even know what the short waves are for. I know, I used to record little funky sounds that come over it on certain sections of the dial, but I think I recorded over all of those tapes, so... Those don't exist anymore. <laughs> Go figure, right? But, both the tape decks still work, and for some reason I've got a tape in there that has absolutely nothing on it, so I don't know what that's all about, but... Yeah, so I'm gonna put this thing back together now, and I'll come back to that. All that should be left to do now is, well, I gotta pull the wire out of the speaker terminals, but this thing should, at the very least, be functional. Hey, sure enough. Dial's a bit off, but that's to be expected, and I don't really care about that so much. Oh, I got the hiccups. Oh, looks like we got AM band back. Oh, there's something. Hey, you look at the AM or uh, other antennas in here, and it's got all this extra stuff on it. And it's like, what is all that? That one works for SW2, I figured out. Because when I touch it, signals get stronger. This one's for the AM, and I can only guess this one's for SW1. And then it uses, of course, the main external antenna for FM. So, All right, everything's working now. Awesome. Very awesome. But yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep going here. <laughs> I keep coming back to this stupid rap station. Well, I forgot something of a little importance and that this switch kind of needs to be in that place right now. And But everything's working. I got the uh, other thing I forgot was that little piece of metal sticking up right there. That's what controls the recording section of the tape deck. And of course I forgot to put it back in place, right? Because that's just something I would totally forget to do. Yeah, that little squiggly piece right there goes up. And when you hit the record button, I'm gonna hit the record button right now because there's a recordable tape in there. And it pushes down on that button and activates the recording circuit of this particular radio. So that's just great. And now I am recording myself speaking. Because that's just great. And now I'm going to listen to it. Activates the recording circuit of this. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. That's uh this is actually the first radio I ever recorded any tapes on, okay? This has history and that's why I'm trying to keep it and fix it to make it in working condition cuz this radio has some serious history with me. Okay. This is the first System, this is the first, I, I guess you can call it a boom box. It's got the two speakers that attach to the sides and all that fun stuff. And yeah, this is the first system where I actually learned to do this. Okay, you see the tape's spinning at its normal speed right now, right? Well, that's when I let off on the buttons a little tiny bit until it starts going a little bit faster. And then it's recording in what I like to call slow record so this right here is slow record and then I go and play it back and it sounds like
Or maybe it's not gonna do anything because I did it wrong. <laughs> Oops. Okay, let's try that one again. I think it's because I've got the whole thing just kind of hanging out here. It's not gonna push the button right. Okay. Now it should work right. Okay, spinning normally, spinning normally, blah da da blah da da blah. And now it's gonna spin a little bit faster, and it's going to sound totally weird. But this is this is where I got my slow record thing from. Ah, come on, play. Normally, blah da da blah da da blah. And now it's gonna spin a little bit faster. Yeah, I I gotta do something about that because it's just barely coming through now. But anyway, that's what I used to do with that particular system. It was interesting at the time, and it pretty much made a lot of my days. So, All right, I'm going to continue putting this thing back together now after I take it apart again and put the switch piece back in. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> This thing now works better than it ever has before. Your countdown. We're nine songs away from the number one for 2015 of the greatest 400 rock songs of all time. And how's about number nine from Zeppelin, from the Zozo disc, or uh, the fourth album if you prefer, Black Dog 98 Rocks. rock songs of all time and how's about number nine from zeppelin from the zozo disc or uh, the fourth album if you prefer black dog no hey, hey, Mom, way you move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it still gets me every time all right this thing's all back together now can be put away again you notice i have a little switch up here well yeah, I did that a while back when I got my little portable CD player, which I also still have from the late 90s. Yeah, it, that is actually the second one I got in 2004 on the move up to Anchorage from Olympia, Washington. This here is my original CD player. And believe it or not, it actually still works despite not having the original spindle. <laughs> because the original spindle broke. But it still works. But anyway, I would always connect it up to a tape adapter. Because you know with tape decks, you got to have a tape adapter to play anything other than tapes, right? Well, the motor was always running. And I was like, well, this is going to take some... This is going to put some stress on the motor, so I'm like, okay, blah, 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 I'm going to put a switch in here. So what I did is I put a switch in there, and now, um, it's having a little trouble right now because the, uh, the belts are all stiff and everything, but that switch just shuts the motor off, so I didn't have to worry about potentially burning out the motors, which... Now that I think about it, I didn't know what I was thinking about back then. <laughs> but it's there. And now it's, now it's dead. Well, that's weird. <laughs> I guess it's not strong enough to start it up after it stopped. I don't know. Whatever. So. Cool, that's another thing I've just fixed and made work again. What's next? I don't really think there's 
there's anything that really needs to be working. Oh, there is one more thing I do have to mention right now, though, for this extremely long, stupid video. And that is that thing right there. That is an SSI Neo MP3 player for cars. Another thing from the late 90s and early 2000s. This uses a standard three and a half inch hard drive to play music. Yeah, one of these. He uses one of these. You put music on it, MP3s, whatever, and it'll play your music through whatever. And it's got a little remote here. It's a wired remote, so like this cable goes all the way back and underneath the entertainment center and up to the unit. And right now, it's actually got a bad wire, but since it doesn't seem to affect the functionality of the remote itself, I'm not going to worry about it. But it also works, and it is plugged in to my trusty little 12-volt power supply, as is my amplifier and all of these fans, which is controlled by the deck, as you can see. So there you go. There's that. And it works. I actually put a 10 gig, 2 and a half inch hard drive in it, and it works. So, I guess winning, right? <laughs> Doesn't take a whole lot of power to run, which is great. And, like I said, it works. Yeah, there we go. It's really, really, really finicky about the ID3 tags, though. Some of them it'll read. And some of them it won't. Like this one, it's not reading the ID3 tags on this one at all. See if I can find one it'll read. Yeah, it's, it'll read some of them, but it won't read all of them. I don't know, it's really weird, but... It's also old, and probably running on the first version of ID3 that ever existed. So, yeah, iTunes doesn't. <laughs> iTunes does whatever it wants, it seems like, sometimes, but... And of course all those wires. You get this little bit over here too, so that's just great. You get a duplicate display from there to here, which is really kind of neat. And of course you can skip through and whatever. Yeah, like I said, it only reads a couple of them, but every single one of them has ID3 tags. Because they show up fine on my iPod. Which, really, there's no... <laughs> there's really no... Uh, comparison there but I'm just gonna make it anyway but just for the heck of it so anyway that's it for this stupidly extremely long video I'm gonna shut her down and listen to my music